Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord. Give us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living, that we may come to those ineffable joys that you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you in the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. In the first year of King Belshazzar of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head as he lay in bed. Then he wrote down the dream. I, Daniel, saw in my vision by night the four winds of heaven stirring up the great sea, and four great beasts came out of the sea, different from one another. As for me, Daniel, my spirit was troubled within me, and the visions of my head terrified me. I approached one of the attendants to ask him the truth concerning all this. So he said that he would disclose to me the interpretation of the matter. As for these four great beasts, four kings shall arise out of the earth. But the holy ones of the Most High shall receive the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, forever and ever. The word of the Lord. song for today is Psalm 149. We will read responsibly by whole verse. Hallelujah. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing his praise in the congregation of the faithful. Let the children of the Lord be joyous in their king. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praise to him with timbal and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people and adorns the poor with victory. Let the faithful rejoice in triumph. Let them be joyful on their beds. 
Let the praises of God be in their throat, and a two-edged sword in their hand, to wreak vengeance on the nations and punishment of the peoples, kings in chains and their nobles with links of iron, to inflict on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all his faithful people. Hallelujah. The second reading is from the first chapter of Ephesians. In Christ we have also obtained an inheritance, having been destined according to the purpose of him who accomplishes all things according to his counsel and will, so that we, who were the first to set our hope on Christ, might live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, when you had heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and had believed in him, were marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. This is the pledge of our inheritance toward redemption as God's own people to the praise of his glory. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and your love toward all the saints, and for this reason I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what, it is, what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you, when they revile you and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Good morning. Happy All Saints Day. Happy homecoming. I, it's been so long since I've seen Anna Marie not in a box because she lives in Virginia and she drove all the way up here. Thank you for coming up this morning. This is awesome. For those of you on Zoom who are wondering why Anna Marie is not there, it's because she's here. <laughs> We're just so excited to see people that we haven't seen in a long time. So thanks for making the effort today. Um, this is, I'm hoping this is going to be worth your time. Vic's already cooking. So we've got lunch planned after. Hope you can plan to stay. We can just catch up. Um, I want to talk a little bit about All Saints Day. We do this first Sunday in November every single year. It's a day when we remember the saints that have gone before. You know, yeah, the saints, the big saints. And we've been taught, especially if you've had any family members or friends that are from the Roman Catholic tradition, that in order to be a saint, number one, you have to be dead. And two, after that, you have to have two miracles attributed to you. Well, number one, we're not dead yet. Plus. And I don't know about you, but I'm not seeing how miracles are going to be attributed to me. But luckily, we don't really believe in saints in that same way. Yes, all of those people, but also all of us. Because we have in some way, shape, or form come to faith in God, and we are all doing the best we can. And some days, the best we can is a miracle in itself. Right? <laughs> From Ephesians. I'm old enough to need glasses. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. When I was in seminary, we had a fairly new um, professor of homiletics that's preaching come in, and Dr. Uh, Ruth Anna Hook. She's still, I think she's chair of the department now at the seminary. I've been gone so long. Um, absolutely fantastic. She would walk people through voice exercises and how to, you know, connect with people in your, in your preaching and that, that sort of thing. I remember her, the first class, we were all nervous taking her class for the first time because you didn't know what you were walking into. You remember that. The first time you had a teacher for the first time, like, you don't know what they expect. You don't know, are they going to be fair? Are they going to be, like, how is this going to go? And that's how it was. First assignment, don't worry, I'm not giving it to you. There is no pop quiz. Okay. First assignment, stand up without thinking 
and explain to the class what is the hope that is in you. You with me on that? What is the hope that is in you? And I think not just for people who are studying and trying to be ordained, but for all of us as people of faith, that's a really good question to answer. What is the hope that is in you? I thought today I would share with you mine. Here is the hope that is in me. I believe that every person is created by God loved by God, and is created with this feeling way down deep within them with a longing for a relationship with the holy. They don't know that that's necessarily what it is. It's just a hole that they're trying to fill. And they're going to fill it. And it could be with stuff. It could be with busyness. It could be with too much shopping, overworking, overeating, overdrinking. It could be with any kind of something to try to fill the emptiness. And it isn't until they find that relationship with God that they are actually fulfilled. And my hope comes in Because what I believe is that when we actually experience the love of God in our own lives, not with any strings, where we find God and we know that we are loved and accepted for exactly who we are, not because of something that society told us we're supposed to be or our family and friends told us we're supposed to do, but we are actually loved for who we are, come what may. The good and the bad and the ugly and the whole thing. That's when we change. And any pain or hurt or bitterness or anger or resentment or bigotry or discrimination that somehow has we have come to ascribe to is eliminated because the love of God is so powerful that when we actually experience it for ourselves we change it's the thing that reveals to us not only all the stuff that needs to change about ourselves but also the great person that we were created to be that we all have that potential to be a saint of God, to share God's love with someone else, and to make a difference in this world that so needs healing. We have the power to change the world. And the way we do it is tapping in to that hope that is within us. Because for each one of us, it's a little bit different. You know, I am never, ever going to sing like Nathaniel. I want to. We probably all want to. I'm never going to be as talented as Caleb. I'm never going to be as smart as Marjorie Schulenberg. Never. (laughs) Not going to happen. Andre, I'm never going to be a Yankee fan. (laughs) I don't know what to say about that. (laughs) Okay? We all have those things that we are just really good at. And when we realize who we are in God and that we were created to be this unique individual that has our own set of gifts and talents and that the world needs that, even Yankee fans, the world needs that. That's how the world has changed. That's why I'm doing this. Because I feel like people need to know that there's a place that they can come and they can be at home and they will be accepted for exactly who they are. And for any of us, if there's stuff about us that needs to change, if our minds need to be opened, 
if our hearts need to be opened in some way, the way that happens is through a relationship with Jesus Christ. That's how it works. And we will all find that as we deepen our own spirituality in whatever way we individually need it. That is the hope that is in me. This, over the next few weeks, I would challenge you to think about what is the hope that is in you? What is it that drives you? What means something to you? What matters to you the most? What is different about you? Because whatever it is that is your passion, that's exactly what the world needs. And as soon as you let go of all of the constraints that are holding you back from living into it, you, my friend, are going to change the world. It might not be the world, but it could be our world. It might just start right here. Maybe Elkridge, maybe Howard County, maybe Maryland. But we can make a difference in the lives of the people around us. There is so much hate and bitterness and division. And in God, there is only unity. And that's what it means to be a saint, to realize who you are in Jesus Christ and how you have the power to make a difference. This is All Saints Day, and this is homecoming. Welcome home, friends. Amen. Let us stand and proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people. Father, we pray for our holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve you. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially our family and friends, 
on Trinity's prayer list. Give to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We offer prayers for our families, Chuck and Amy Shemenkovitz, Beverly Ann St. Louis, Fred Steffens, and Kina Luis, Louisa and Elijah Story. We offer prayers for our military and their families, Anthony, Anna Marie, Vincent, Kevin, Jerry, Danielle, Brian, Beth, Grant, Patrick, Jonathan, Walter, Justin, Cameron, Adrian, Brad, Cody, Josh, Ben, David, and Luke. We offer prayers for our college students, Kristen, AJ, Virginia, John, Kelsey, Martha, Zach, Gabrielle, Lydia, Ben, and Joe. Say together the prayer for Trinity. Heavenly Father, we thank you for calling us into your service. Our mission is to invite others to be a part of your community, inspiring them to a deep and abiding relationship with you and to serve all in your name. Help us to respond to that call wholeheartedly and lead us boldly into the future. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways in the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. Hope you can stay. Uh, it's a little wet out, so I don't know how much is going to happen outside because um, the grass is pretty wet. But uh, Vic is grilling. We have food, so and we have each other. So that'll be enough. It'll be fun. So I hope you can stay and uh, join us for a picnic. Um, next week, we are going to ha have a conversation in between services. And we're going to start at around uh, 9 o'clock about restarting the adult Sunday school. Um, we've been doing uh, Sunday school once a month for little kids outside. Um, and as families with children want to come back, we'll, we'll start it more frequently than that. Um, but we have adults that have been coming and people have been asking about it. So we're just gonna talk about what do you wanna do, how frequent, um, and that sort of thing. Back in the pandemic, when we were closed, we couldn't do anything. We started a once a month book group. That is going to remain and it will stay on Zoom. So for those of you who are in the book group, this is not to replace that. This is in addition to that. So we're gonna talk about what that looks like. Um, so if you wanna be a part of that conversation and are interested in starting um, the adult Sunday school, come next week. Um, then on Monday, we have the Day Resource Center dinner, our, our normal uh, meal that we serve. Um, an email will go out with signups. Amy, did you want to say anything more about that? Terrific.
Great. All right. And for those of you on Zoom, um, Amy said thanks to everybody who's already signed up to provide food for the uh, DRC meal on the 14th. And if you have questions and want to um, help, just reach out to her if you have any questions. Did I get that about right? All right. Good. Um, and then on Sunday the 20th, just so you know about this, not to scare you, we're going to make Advent wreaths. That means it's coming. <laughs> Now, it is not first Advent, so don't worry. We're actually doing it the week before. If you are planning to attend, and you've done it in previous years, some of you have returned the gold um, forms for the Advent reads, um, and we will have those for you. If you kept yours at home, bring it. Um, if you could let Denise know if you're planning to attend, that would be most helpful. It's not a requirement. If you forget to, don't worry about it. But she's just trying to get a sense of how many forms do we need, how many sets of candles, and how many clippings in order to make the, the wreaths. So if you could help her out by letting her know if you're planning to come, that would be most appreciated. And that's on the 20th. So I think you're going to want to come for that. And that will be, um, we'll, we'll end up probably doing it after both services. Um, but if you want to do it in between services, it's probably preferred. All right, any questions, any other announcements that we need to make? No other announcements. Okay. Um, are there birthdays in the coming week? I know Mary Farmer on Zoom has one. Does anybody else have a birthday? All right. Let us pray for Mary. Um, Holy God, we thank you for Mary. We thank you for her many gifts and talents. We thank you for all that she does for her family, her friends, and all of us. We pray your blessing upon her as she celebrates her birthday, that this year would be one of health, happiness, and wholeness. Um, how about wedding anniversaries? Any wedding anniversaries? No. Um, I just wanted to highlight and um, give thanks to the Wren family and to Pat Kaufman for the flowers on the altar this morning. Uh, the Wrens gave in Thanksgiving for their son Andrew's birthday, and uh, Pat did for her great-grandson, who was born last week, for Owen Oliver. So we're going to just say a prayer of blessing for Andrew and for Owen and Owen Oliver right now. Holy God, we thank you for Andrew and for Owen Oliver and all that they mean to their families and their friends. We pray your blessing upon them. We give you thanks for their life, for the many gifts and talents that you have given them. And we pray that they would continue to grow in your love and that they would recognize and live into the hope that is in them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For in the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of witnesses, that we might rejoice in their fellowship and run with endurance the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of the children of Abraham to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Okay. Yeah, I went in here and he was saying, Ollie, what the hell? Let us pray. <coughs> Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. 
Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. of thanks to the choir this morning and to Caleb. I mean, you guys always do such a phenomenal job. Y'all are a small but mighty force and just really appreciate your ministry and how you lead us all in worship every single week. So thank you for all that you do. Really terrific. And with that, yes, absolutely. <laughs> Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you, God.